by many names and take many forms. We bring wonder <laughs> and hope. Fairy tales assemble in a story about a plucky gang of folklore heroes who posse up to take on an evil bogeyman spreading fear across the globe. With the Tooth Fairy, Father Christmas and the Easter Bunny in the good corner, I don't fancy bogey's chances. And our powers are greater. Peter, there's a lot in this film about the idea of wonder and not yeah. being too cynical and keeping your eyes open and your heart ready to take in anything that I know, is there I know. for it, but... I never felt a <laughs> finger wagged in my face more <laughs> than this film. It was a bit like the sort of J.M. Barry thing is that you have to say, I believe in fairies, otherwise these fairies are going to die a terrible death. And yet, when J.M. Barry does it, somehow it's charming. This film, I found very hectoring, to be quite honest. There was something kind of humorless and even quite reactionary about so it. So why you have to believe in Father you Christmas? Have to be you have to believe it. The Easter believe Bunny, it. you have the to Easter like Bunny them as well. And the Sandman, and they're all subordinate to the man in the moon, for some reason, who is this weird kind of godlike figure, but never, a, is, at least I don't think so, never dramatised. And the idea is they, they need an extra person on their team to combat the evil baddie, Pitch Black, who of course is a Brit, Jude Law, uh, having a sort of Richard Dawkins like British accent, <laughs> I can only imagine. Uh, and they got to have this new bad boy warrior on their team, and that's Jack Frost. Uh, and he thinks of himself as a bit of a nihilist, uh, and he realizes his destiny is to be a hero and a nice person like, like them. Mm. Uh, and the one interesting thing about the film is it just does disclose an interesting backstory for Jack Frost, who appears to be a kind of ghostly figure. He appears to have had this uh, pre mythic human existence which when you find out what it is, it makes sense of this destiny. There's a little bit of the Bourne movies <laughs> There's there. a Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But there, none of the other characters, Santa Claus and the Sandman, they don't have this backstory, at least I don't, unless, unless I've misunderstood it, but they don't have the same kind of backstory as Jack Frost does. I, I don't know, I mean, I love silly animations and the idea of an Avengers assemble of kiddie folklore figures is, is a funny idea. But my goodness, if you compare it to some of the great Pixar, if you compare it to Monsters, Inc., for example, which it resembles in some ways, it's about dreams and kids' imaginations. And that movie was done with absolutely kind of superb lightness and wit and invention and gaiety. And this is, I don't know, this is stodgy to me. It feels so stodgy, I, I couldn't get over it. It's quite a decent cast, though, Catherine, isn't it? I mean, you've got Alec Baldwin in there as the kind of Russian Father North, Father Christmas style. Uh, Chris Pine is Jack Frost. Chris Pine is Jack Frost. Pretty yes. Good, you know? Yeah. I mean, can you Hugh Jackman is the Easter Bunny, an Aussie Easter Bunny. Yeah, I mean, he, that felt very on the button casting, whereas actually Alec Baldwin felt very odd by casting as this Russian. It's strange because he does it. He does this Russian accent again, not not particularly explained. Yeah. It's just it's just uh, maybe it's an idea he had in rehearsal, and they nobody could bear to tell him. <laughs> he also inverts his sentences, so he will say things like "Let's get down to tax of brass." Tax of brass, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really okay. weird because people. Were, I'm sure they didn't want him to do. I'm pretty sure they wanted to do his Jack Donaghy voice from Thirty Rock. They don't want him to do something because anybody could do that. Yeah. That's that Russian voice, to be honest with you. Uh, a big fan of Alec Baldwin, though I am. So why does this kind of thing get made? Or what, There must be something in it that we can I don't, enjoy. I think it's strange, isn't it? Because it's so much about the power of imagination and belief that, as Peter says, you sort of, you know, if you're told something repeatedly, you, you want to believe the opposite. And, mm. you, you know, it's too, it's too on the button. And your own imagination isn't given any space yeah. to do anything because yeah. you're just you're being forced to Because you're ordered to be imaginative all the time. <laughs> you think, well, I'll believe in you. If you're convincing and amusing enough, I, of course I'll believe in you. I'll believe in you with the guileless innocence of a child, I assure you. But you've got to meet me halfway and do something interesting mate everyone to the sleigh buckle up where are the seat belts ha! that was just expression yeah. <laughs> here we go everyone loves the sleigh <laughs> 